Hello! Welcome to my ghost walkthrough of Rose Garden. Finally, my favorite mission from the Dark Project 20th Anniversary Contest. Rose Garden is, in my opinion, a masterpiece. However, the reception of this mission has been somewhat mixed, and it's understandable. This is a demanding mission. It presents the player with several challenges, including a certain timed section that I hear some people weren't fond of, but also in terms of basic navigation it can be quite confusing. So allegedly, quite a few people's first playthroughs were a little frustrating. That said, the mission also gives you opportunities to reduce or even outright remove some of the challenges you have to deal with, and if you figure it out, it becomes a pretty smooth experience overall. So today I'm gonna show you how to ghost it in what's hopefully a pretty easy way. Let's begin. And let's read the briefing, which for once isn't narrated by Garrett. Rather, it's a message he received. Welcome back, old friend. Do you still dare call yourself a master thief, or are the rumors true that you have lost your edge? No matter. The news I have for you should quicken the heartbeat of any tougher who knows his stuff. It is about none other than the Golden Books, lost all these years to secrecy and forgetfulness. Aye, and now that the veils have lifted just this little, the hands are already there to grab at the bounty. Or, like a former pals would prefer, make it sink back into its former obscurity. A king's ransom. One of the books alone would be a princely prize, and many would kill just for a part of it in these hard times. Even the honest will be tempted when they get wind of its existence, and where are the virtues in this city to temper their greed? As you can surmise, my interest in this affair is far from antiquarian. I will claim half of the bounty when we obtain it. Remember, I know you well, but you do not know me, and I know a few crucial pieces of information required to reach our target that I am not inclined to share. If the deal is off, or you try to cross me, you shall never lay your hands on the books. Now for our deal. This night, a certain person will apparently obtain a certain clue that leads to the golden books. Once I learn of the proper circumstances, I will outline a proposal more precisely in a message, one that you will find at Rose Garden, in the heart of Southern Hightown. You should know the place well. An old lovers and thieves hang out, and a place of many meetings and clandestine arrangements. Your message will be waiting for you on the third floor, last door at the end of the corridor. As for the words rotten palaces and locked stores, you know the score. They are yours to plunder as long as you can get away with it. Okay, let's take a look at the objectives. See what your mysterious client has to say about the golden books. Go to Rose Garden for your meeting. Making enemies in High Town is a risky venture. Don't kill any servants or aristocracy. All these noble nests are waiting for a talented entrepreneur. Still 2400 loot and no less. Rubbing the golden plate on the Master Forger's mansion is said to bring a thief luck. You don't believe in tall tales, but it doesn't hurt to try. Lord Haskell's family is rumored to own a cursed gemstone. Curse or no curse, it would be a shame not to pinch it. Once the tasks are done, leave High Town towards Stone Market. Okay. Now I'm gonna buy a couple of arrows. I'm not planning on using them, but a couple AIs in this mission have a tendency of getting stuck, and I might need those arrows to get by them if that happens. I'm also gonna get the two tips here. Chimney Sweep's tip. An old Chimney Sweep offers to give you some information about getting around in High Town for a small donation. And Thief in Need. An associate knows someone who might set you up with a special tip, if you can help him first. Okay, let's make a real save. And take a look at the map. So we start here, in the middle of the city, which you don't see too often. And there are a bunch of locked gates, marked with these crosses, that prevent us from accessing the entire city for now. So you can kinda draw an imaginary line like this, and we have access to the northeast, while that Cat Street has Prince Gap, where Master Forger's residence is, as well as Grand Modern's estate, aren't yet accessible. You can kinda get to this part of town by doing some tricky climbing, but you're not supposed to, and there is no guarantee you're gonna be able to get back either. Now, our first goal is to make it to Rose Garden, in the northwest, and the way I remembered the mission is I thought it was pretty linear until you get to Rose Garden. That's not the case at all. The section of town we have available to us right now is actually quite nonlinear, and just looking at it like this, 
it's very difficult to explain this layout. Because, sure, you can make out what's a street and what's a building, but there are lots and lots of ways to move around here. You can go across rooftops, you can go through multiple buildings, and it really is a mission you have to explore to understand how to navigate it. Now, a quick word about Haskell's residence, which we can break into right now. Don't complete this objective until you've done what your client wants you to do. This will trigger some changes in the city, and we don't want those at this point in the mission. And I'll explain later what I mean. Let's read the notes we got. First, the instructions is just the briefing, which I will already read. Let's read Thief in Need. Word is that the Hammers have finally caught up with old Pod when he played his latest trick on them. They are keeping him at a spectacle of sinners, the jail near Master Forger Giao's residence. But it is the bucket bound for crack slot for him tomorrow. Looks like this is it for the hapless Kajur, unless you can find a way to break him out. Okay, we're gonna do that. Chimney sweep tip. I have worked many a shoot in High Town in my time, and it was often the easiest work to do. These noble roosts are all connected on the top. As it is said, so a gentleman could visit his peers and conduct his affairs without getting his shoes muddy. I had spied many a treasure in those dark holes, enough to tempt an honest man. But those were more innocent days, and richer. I'm sure even the great lords have felt the pinch with the wars and shortages. I would get up from the streets some way and look for a way around. It is mighty confusing, and I always ended up in the opposite direction of where I wanted to go, but it's a start. One time, I went all the way from Morwin Street to those strange Al Azri towers to do a factory job. Mighty weird people, those, and mean. And cut his list. You have it all wrong, kid. The question isn't who will bring his priceless jewelry to Grand Modern's, the true question is who will not. The guard at Grand Modern's ball will be reinforced threefold, from the parapets all the way to the Great Hall, tight like a mousetrap. The fool will try there. The wise man, who should be you, should be going for the empty nests. You are already the proverbial fox in the chicken coop, now make good use of it. For that reason, I have passed some bribes and placed inquiries, and here is how it looks. Lord Wedrick Haskell and Lady Wailona Landon Haskell. Invited, but only Lady Wailona will be going, as Lord Wedrick is still mourning his only son. The Haskells are the biggest if you can manage them. That curse is just an old wives tale. Major Thomas Weir and his spinster sister Grizzle. Too much of a reckless to find out, probably not going. Residence is hard to approach. Master Forger Giav. Invited, going. No doubt to conspire about someone getting hand. Count Horace Mortesaig. Invited, going. Repeated money troubles. Lady Sybil Kelvin. Not invited, but no sentry will say no to the old lizard. Will be there just to ruin things, be careful with her. Lord Amir Al Azri and Lady Fandisa Al Azri. Invited, going right after locking up their three nubile daughters most securely. An unexpected treasure hoard, eh? Lord Hugh Humphrey Landon. I'm sure Grand Modern invited the others just to spurn him. Ha! <laughs> Probably withdrawn to his chambers. Earl Eustache Brascombe and his cousin Leobald. Invited, and the old goat is hopping up and down to introduce the young never-do-well to prospective brides, or at least conquests. Seigneur de Catentin. Invited, but he has taken ill and locked himself up in his townhouse. Not a bad list to visit, eh? Once you're done, I'll be visiting you, my boy, so spare some good coin for Uncle Cuddy. Alright. So we don't have too many choices of where to go at the start. We are faced with three locked gates right away, and the only door we can use is this one. You can also rope up here, which I'm not sure was ever intended, but you can do that, and it won't break the mission. I'm gonna use the door. Othelio Bolisard, wine cellar. Let's break in. <coughs> Got the special reserve here, which is missing. Bunch of vintages. And the journal. I must be going mad. The ran is missing, and the special barrel is nowhere to be found. I had taken considerable care to secrete it in the locked compartment, and now it's gone, with the key still on my table. It seems like a portent. Could Volgrant have made an advance move in this peculiar fashion? 
It seems outlandish, but I fear I shall know the trace of that vintage before long if I do not move this very instant. Time is of the essence. I must rush if I aim to untangle this knot before the noose is set on my neck. Perhaps Caden might know about the recent goings-on. Okay, a quick note about the dates here. This mission obviously takes place after disorientation, but it's interesting just how much time has passed, because if you compare the dates in disorientation and this, Rose Garden takes place a year after. So it was a while. Here, it's a bottle of wine, and we're gonna follow the guard here. Something seems quiet enough now. Oh well. <clears throat> right, Who's let me there? Who's read this, Barnard. I have been generous in providing you these quarters free of charge while you are in my service. But enough is enough. The reek coming from the servants' room is intolerable. I can feel the stench right from the privy, and Miss M almost turned her back at my door on her latest visit. No matter the reason, no matter the excuses, either it's gone or your lot are. Ball is hard. So if you get in here, you can see that the stench probably comes from this dead thief. And you can climb this, but there is no reason to, there is nothing up there. <laughs> Let's head in here. There is a goblet. There is also a gold candlestick in there. <laughs> Someone there. Total 115. <laughs> it's a throne room. How pretentious can you get? That's a nice throne indeed. <laughs> And above it is a vent. <laughs> Nobody can hear that. This door is locked and unpickable. And here is our way forward. See there. Just the wind, I guess. <coughs> All right, so we emerged at Swordsman Plaza right here. Let's make another real save. Here is another one of those locked gates that we can't use for now. And down here is a locked gate that we have seen already. That's where we started the mission. So this is Haskell's. And we could go down this street, but there is no real reason to do that, except to get one readable. Thought I saw something. Orders. Lieutenant Morrill, this evening's exercise will involve a retesting of the gateway system. At the sound of the bell, you shall withdraw a man to their barracks and cease patrolling your designated area. After the set count, we shall perform the change of guard, according to the usual procedure. Tomorrow morning, a special bonus will be distributed among the men. 
With respect to your concerns, the Hammerites and private guards shall no doubt remain to guard their usual areas. This should make things secure enough. I do not believe we should think about an emergency situation. Captain Huntley. And we could also hop over here, but all that there is is a locked gate. And this leads to Morwin Street and the Bazaar. And we can only open it from the other side. Nothing else down that way, so let's move on. Another locked gate leading to the bazaar, so this would be right here. This is turn court, I'm gonna get to much later. And at this point, we get our first choice of how to proceed here. So at the end of the street is yet another locked gate, but we could rope up here, Someone which I'm not gonna me. do, but I wanna show you where this leads. <laughs> this way we can get up to the rooftop, right above where we started. And from here we could continue through Humphreys and eventually get to Haskell's. But like I said, we don't need to get to Haskell's just yet. So instead, I'm gonna continue through here. The Knights and Knaves Alehouse. Huh? The woman here has the alehouse key, which you can use to relock this door, if you so desire. Here is a bottle of wine and the scroll. Now, I will only say it once again. Enough of that foolish claptrap. It is just the winds blowing through the chimney shafts and the pipes reverberating. You will at once stop spreading rumors among the patrons, and I specifically forbid contacting the hammerites. I will not let my establishment lose custom or have the walls knocked down willy-nilly because some silly goose hears something and thinks they are whales from underground tombs and secret chambers. Leave that stuff to the cheap romances and leave the trash well enough alone. It is the cleaning where you ought to set your mind. Sorry, nothing here now. Behind these crates here is a vent, which I'm not gonna use, but I wanna show you where it leads. Over here is what's basically a one-way drop into some kind of machine room. <laughs> and you also take a bit of damage while going down, so obviously not the best way to move forward. The guard here has another copy of the alehouse key. Sir? Was that you? Remember, skim the surface, but don't remove all of it. A cloudy consistency is ideal. Maintain an even, thin froth and dispose of the clouded nuggets. Wait until we are closed up and dump it with the night soil. The guests need not know what gives our beer its characteristic taste. And our competitors better not learn because someone wags the stun. That means you, Chauncey. That's kinda disgusting. And if we drop down into the water, we can find a tunnel. leads to some abandoned place. <gasps> Silver nugget in here, and we can't go that way. But we can hop over to this pipe. The Ordinal of Alchemy. Now this control panel opens a door Identify and that takes us back to this underpass next to Swordsman Plaza. We don't actually have to open that. Did something make a noise? Instead let's proceed through here. And this takes us to this machine room. So obviously this is a much better way of getting here.
there you can see the street that we went through a couple minutes ago and here is another control panel and I like this giant arrow pointing up so obviously it indicates that something has opened above Sir? Was that you? couple ways we can go from here. Let's first explore the rest of this rooftop. Commission. I have raised the advance and it shall wait for you at the range location. I'm still working on the positioning. Follow the signs I'll leave and the mark shall have no chance to slip the noose. X marks a spot. I'm counting on you to be exact. If things don't work out or I can't leave you a sign, do the best you can under the circumstances and I will try to arrange something else. The secondary meeting place will be in the bazaars, and keep your fingers off the stores. I don't want the night watch blowing the plan. This is a very important readable, but its importance won't become evident until much later. I'm actually gonna keep it with me and refer to it when it comes into play. <laughs> and here we get to the rooftop, that's basically right above the alehouse. Someone saw us. What we really need to get here is a gold candlestick and a neatly written message. Don't be silly, Eunice. What is a little smoke compared against the march of progress? Should we go back to the dirt and muck of our forefathers, trudging through the bucolic wilderness with their hunting dogs and all? Should we light our streets with sputtering oil and smelly torches, surely as smoke as it comes, instead of the wonders of human ingenuity? Surely you are jesting. Yes, the chimney is right below our window, but I must remind you, these are temporary accommodations, while I arrange a good position. The name Rothschild will open many doors, I can reassure you. Many doors. In just a year, even Grand Modern will regret not having invited us to his crummy costume party. And we will live in a, our own high town mansion, although perhaps still a small one. With lackeys and serving maids and wonderful electric lights everywhere. This I can promise you, my love, your beloved Juniper. Alright, now from here we could hop over to this lantern and straight to Mortisaix state. There is also a lever here that opens a gate right below us, the one leading to the bazaar. But this will be our way forward. So eventually we have to rope up that tree and proceed that way towards Al Azri Towers. What we could also do is go all the way around and still loop back to Marta Sakes. And I'm gonna do that instead. Because we never have to go visit these places again later in the mission. And there is also a certain item in Morwin Street I wanna get. So there is no reason not to do that. Now we have to be careful here with the archer on the bridge between Humphreys and Haskells, because he can see really well. can see into a building and we can get in there by picking this lockbox but I'm not gonna do that I'll show you this vent from the other side instead for now let's continue along the ledge here This door is locked and unpickable, that's gonna be our way out of Haskell's, once we're done there. <laughs> and this, I'm not sure why this corridor exists, it doesn't lead anywhere. 
And this will be our way forward. Before that, let's take a small detour and hit Bresco on the state. So we can access the rotunda here with the vase and the rug. And there is also a room on the other end here. With three gems. Total 585. Guard's letter. Mr. Weir, sir, I have noticed you have what looks like plenty stuff coming out of your hothouse, and now water is leaking from those pipes as well. Me and Gregor banged on your door a few times, but we could not make you hear it. We would just like to ask if things are okay, as in maybe you need a gardener to take care of the place or something. Gregor's no good with the things, but I fancy I could make one fine gardener. I used to shovel manure back when I was a lad, if you'll pardon me saying. I would gladly do it and not ask for much, if you would need someone. Signed, Reg, house guard. Finally, we can rope up here. And get to a rooftop garden of sorts. <laughs> Down here is a corpse and two nuggets. Total 735. <laughs> Here. So these are all corpses. There is a gold goblet. And the Rand's letter. Don't worry a thing. Bolisard will fret a little, but he will be none the wiser. You only made a wax impression, and I've only used the fitting key to retrieve a small cask for our amusement. We will drink to his health and long life, and we will enjoy the kiss of that carefully kept ambrosia in good company. The Ran. So this appears to be Bolisard's special reserve. Not sure why his special reserve is poisoned. But it is what it is. And down here is Morwen Street. Let's make another little save. To get down here without taking any damage, we can do this. And let's head into this building. Now this room should be completely safe. But there is a guy in here that we should be worried about. There he is. Let me first show you what's down here. Hey, I'm not dead, you know. This will loop us back to where we were before. So that's the vent I showed you earlier. Obviously I don't need to go that way. What I want to do is grab a piece of loot inside this room. It's quiet now. Here. Playing dice with him again. This comes up with the money. There we go, a vase, and let's read Old Grand's message. I've gone up top for a little fun with Bolisard's boys. Duran has brought something special the old man's been keeping all for himself and you can bet I'm bringing my cup to try it. You wait for me down here, 
or you can come up and join the festivities. Someone there? Before continuing with Morwin Street, let's see what's down here. Believe it or not, that guy won't see us when we do this. Yes, that's a good demonstration of how forgiving the revision is by default. Inside this shop, you can see a keeper, and we can break in. can't follow the keeper, but this is obviously a front for one of their hideouts. <laughs> Here are two nuggets, and this door we can't close. Now back here, we can get back to a familiar area. No need to go this way, obviously. There is no need to go this way either. This leads to the bazaar proper, but there is no loot here. Just this locked gate that we've seen from the other side already. Now that archer back there is extremely dangerous. <clears throat> Who's there? Who said that? Nothing here so now. Next, I want to get that item. I was talking about earlier. Hello? Is someone there? is an engraved skull. Now this sounds like a key when you pick it up and it goes into the inventory, so it's obviously used for something. And this might seem like a random item in an obscure place, and it kind of is. But it's not needed to complete the mission. All it does is allow us to get one piece of loot, and I'm gonna do that later. Let me actually get rid of this guy. And read the two notes here. The Obscurantium of Dr. Mabuse. Black Dog Row, Dim Wolf Hair. Only for a limited time. Bound to mesmerize. Fires too soon. Fires weakly. Does not fire at all. Feeling inadequate. Are your friends laughing behind your back? There is a solution. Upgrade your bow at Willy Figgins Bowery. Firm grip. Perfect aim. Natural performance. At Grundle's Way, by the lamplighters. You too can hear people in the street exclaim, Please don't hurt me! Guards, there is a strange man over here! He's got a bow! <laughs> 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 
Something move there? Someone behind me? Right, next we're gonna head up to Morta Saig's estate. And this can be a little dicey. There are three guards inside. And the interior isn't very big, so it can feel a little crowded. It's also pretty well lit. So let's actually make a real save here. Before heading inside, I want to get a piece of loot on the other end of this balcony. There we go, gold goblet. On this bookshelf is a switch. And we can get three more pieces of loot here. Total 11.50. Some pawnbroker. He could bow and scrape and promise me the moon, but a simple task? Out of the question. Too dangerous, he said. Nobody will take a job like that. And live in that haunted place, he whined. What hokum. It's just a big mortuary. If it wasn't for my important social obligations, I would go get that stupid mystical heart on my own and prove them wrong. That would shut them up. Everyone is ooing and eyeing our Lord Haskell's cursed gemstone, as if it was the obligation of every established lineage to own one. What about my enchanted crystals? And what about those bizarre old artifacts my auntie Mathilde was keeping on the shelf behind her tea set? Bah! Puppycock and Boulder Dash. I will have to talk to Eustache and Leobald if they are up for an expedition. Just have to make sure we can settle on who gets to keep the heart. That wily old coot is a shoot bargainer, and he would no doubt want to claim it. Perhaps I should not mention the prize first. It might be better to propose a wager and not a business venture. I will have to consult the tea leaves before I go to Grand Modern's party. That should do it. <laughs> Right, I don't have time here. So instead, I'll have to hide in this room. There is nothing else of interest here, it's just a hiding spot. Hello? Is someone there? Right, we should be safe here. Must have uh, been imagining things.
Now this next room is pretty tricky. Sir? Was that you? Nothing make a noise now. The first thing I wanna do here is grab a piece of loot on the rafters above. <laughs> There we go, a diamond. And getting it is pretty easy. The problem here is getting back down. Now, if you don't mind leaving a rope arrow, just place one here and get down to the balcony, that's easy enough. But if you don't want to do that, you have to jump and mantle that balcony mid-fall. That can be tricky. I think I have a good method here. I start in this spot and I creep crouch forward. Let's see how many tries it actually takes me. <laughs> just one. <sighs> Getting down from this balcony is tricky as well, because you can take damage, but if you go backwards, it should be safer. I think that has to do with the fact that your movement speed is slower when you go backwards, so you have less of a chance to get hurt. Right, let's try it here. Good. Tiara. Seems clear enough now. <sighs> Finally, goblet and a gold plate here, total fourteen forty. <laughs> and we are right back where we were. So let's rope up here. <laughs> you can go over this roof and find an easter egg. And here we have a choice of where to go. Down this way we can get to Cistern Court. <laughs> But I'm gonna skip it for now, and instead, I'm gonna enter Al Azra estate. Is that you? Ah, my 
favorite year. Bottle of wine and three goblets there. And let's luck pick this. In the middle here is a pressure plate that sets off a trap. And there are also two gold vases. Total 1790. And a book here. The Testament of Euzon. In those days, unto the overseers came the laborers, relinquishing their burdens. And unto the wise men came the overseers, laying down the staves they were granted. And at last the wise men came to the overlord, wailing, It cannot be done, for they are too old and mighty, and for one slain must fifty of our own perish. The thresholds are breached and spears clash in the cisterns and secret foundations. And the overlord fought for a measure and another, and at last he rose before he spoke. It is upon me to provide for mine. I will go before them, as my lowliest servant would come to my throne, and seek peace if they were to grant it. Into the deeps I shall descend, beyond their circles and wards, and my riches and seat I will offer them. They did praise him loudly and the rise in fear in their hearts gave strength to their clamor. But he did halt them with but one gesture, and continued, O oh, you foolish ones, now you call me a terrible master when I am but your shepherd. What shall you say when I return to rule thee as their servant? Thus he did turn, and tear on his clothes, go before them, as a servant goes to his masters. And his name, as we now know it, was Bazaar. And from the peace he had wrought, Arrows alone an illustrious lineage. What's that? He saw me all the way over here. <coughs> right, that was unfortunate. Someone this archer, like all others, is very dangerous. Ah, my favorite year. The problem is that there is nowhere to hide here, really, so let's actually wait for him to come and go. And we can get out through the window here. This gate we can't open for now. So we have to go through this ruined building with a spider. In this shaft, we can jump over to this hole, but the problem is that usually you make noise when coming through here. So what you want to do is get a little bit closer like this, and it's safer. Three coin stacks inside, total 1812.
this way, we can once again get to Cistern Court. And by going the other way, we get to Rose Garden. Right, finally. In the hedge maze is one piece of loot. Goblet, right here. And this is the establishment where we're supposed to meet our client. So let's save it here. For weary tuffers, if you found your way in here, keep it away to yourself. Now Oglin, Marquesa and Evelyn, pay your drinks in advance. We're all cheaters, but we'll the help you if you're bad at it. No fisticuffs on the floor while others are dancing. Stay clear of the upper floors, what's up should stay up. When brisket says stop, stop. Absolutely no climbing on the hedgerows. Signed, the establishment. Did I just see what I think I saw? There are lots of guys here. Let's first head in here. Storeroom message. Piece of cake, easier than Evelyn, and that's on a bad day. I'll be at the goat tavern at the appointed time, and I'll follow those stupid signs and stand where I'm told. I bring my blade, you bring my money, and the guy's as good as dead. You go for Marquesa afterwards if you like. I have my eyes set on sweet, sweet Evelyn. I know, and I don't care. Sir? Was that you? From the window here, <laughs> we can get behind the bar. Now. And get a couple coins. <laughs> What's that? Sorry, nothing here now. Ah! Oh, is, to do this here, there? which I'm not gonna read. Over there. There's... And the goblets. Going out yeah, the kitchen this way is really dangerous. So let's actually go back. Now, crossing this room is very dangerous as well. What we can do is rope up here, which should be a little safer. This way I don't have to go, but there is a readable in this room I want to get. Thief's <laughs> warning. Don't you make the joke again, or you can bet I'm not moving my pin kitty you out next time. Kitty cat doesn't appreciate that stuff none, and will be dead before we can get to the letter P. Don't refer to him by his name, don't use that nickname, and more importantly, don't ever nick his sugar. Kitty Cat, we're gonna see later in the mission, I believe. Hey, Is it did you see me that? or did something move? Hmm. hmm. Thought I saw something. This is where we have to go, but we first need to get a key. <laughs> that will just take us back to the main hall. No need to go there. Nothing in this room. 
But this door we have to pick. This file is actually valuable. And in the chest here is the upstairs key. And at this point, we're gonna encounter some strange stuff. First of all, there is a ghostly burg somewhere around here. And in this room are two frog beasts. Now, in the water here is a vase, but you don't have to drop into the water. What you wanna do is inch away onto the edge. And grab it like this, and you don't have to alert the frogs. That was the barrack. And this room is rain. And there is also <gasps> gold candlestick in the attic here, total 2107. I have a hard time deciding what my favorite place in this mission is, but the upstairs of the Rose Garden is certainly up there. Nothing down there. In this hallway, there should be a specter guy, he's on the other end. He's not a problem, but he can alert to the trap going off in this room. If you go in fast, you're not gonna trigger it, you can grab the gold skull. On your way out, you're almost guaranteed to trigger it. So if that guy is too close, he's gonna hear that. Otherwise, he's not much of an issue. He does contact damage, quite a lot of it, actually. So, pro tip, don't touch him. Up here, you can get the ring. This room is a vase. Total 23.57. Now we don't need to go out here, but I can show you a zombie in that room. That zombie can actually detect you while you're in this hole. If you're too close to the wall.
And this must be where we meet our client. Well done, well done, thief. Unfortunately, our meeting is off. I have other arrangements to make while the night is young. Your man's name is Bernald. He works as a low-ranking archivist at Hightown Archives, and he hasn't done anything of note in his life until he made a perplexing discovery. He has hinted in private that he has found a trail leading to the Golden Books. Word has not yet gotten out, but the news have already attracted outside interest. One of the parties is Grand Modern himself. The Iron King would be the talk of town with the books in his private collection, and he has offered fame and a life stipend to Bernald, if he would sell out. Their meeting is set to take place in Grand Modern's library late on the night of the 20th anniversary ball. But other influences, who shall now appear unnamed, have also decided to intercede in this affair. Plans have been made and put into motion, with a single aim – to slay Bernald on his way to his destination. Even as you read this, someone else is hard at work to inscribe his instructions of control and murder upon the walls of the district. When the bell in the tower across the archive strikes, the locked gates across the district are opened, and Bernald emerges in the street. Hired killers recruited from the dives and back rooms of Hightown shall lie in wait with blades ready. I intend to throw a wrench into this machinery and seize the bounty for myself, with you as my equal partner. Bernald must not perish this night. I have left you a key to Firewatch Tower, where the district's emergency gate control mechanisms are located. With the key in your possession, you can ring the bell early, and have a fighting chance while the opposition is still mustering. A man has also been entrusted to get you into Grand Modern's. He will open a side window when Bernald arrives safely at the mansion gates. If he doesn't, what use letting an amateur into a wasp's nest swarming with the city's finest? You gotta be kidding me. Okay, we get the city access key here, which we're definitely gonna need. And now this objective is completed and we get two new ones. Ring the bells at Firewatch and follow Bernald to his destination. Bernald must not come to harm this night. Okay. And this window will take us out to where we entered the establishment. You cannot mantle into it, so you have to jump. <gasps> and here we go. Now remember the warning that says no climbing on the hedgerows? <laughs> That's because there are live mines on top of it, but if you stick to the left here, you're actually not gonna trigger any. With the city access key, we can unlock this. <sighs> the Seer Yolanthi. By appointment only, no unforeseen visitors. Let's open this as well. This gate will take us to the ruined building behind Al Azris. And here is Firewatch. By special permission only. So the readme for this mission actually says to make a save once we arrive here, so let's do that. And let's see what's what here. Masterport Colors Control. Do not operate without proper authorization. Disengage Hrablock before operating lever. Lever must be thrown before engaging bell system. Warning, hazardous machinery. Bell system control. It is explicitly forbidden to operate bell system out of sync with portcullis control. Operation of the two systems must take place concretely. So the most obvious thing to do here, and what all the readables so far have hinted at, is to use the city access key on this which will open all the gates around town, so now we finally have access to the entire map. And then ring the bells. At which point Bernald will emerge in the streets. There he is. 
And our goal now is to protect him on his way to Grand Modens, which pretty much is an escort quest. So there is one assassin who's waiting for Bernald. And there are six or seven more. If I stick close to the walls, I have a chance of not being seen. Now, because Bernald is a very smart person, he's gonna go all around town to get to Grand Modens like this, instead of simply taking Dead Cat Street. Now, what you can do here is you can spook him Who's yourself. There? Don't hurt me. Which will force him to take the shortest way possible and to also run. And this is a viable strategy. Usually he makes it. He will be spotted by a couple assassins on his way, but they likely won't be able to catch up to him. The problem is that this strategy doesn't always work, as in sometimes he would just stand in place and not run. I don't know why that is happening, but just keep in mind that it's not 100% consistent. And also, neither this nor knocking out assassins is good for Ghost, so what else can we do? Well, we could avoid ringing the bells, despite what that flag says, which will allow us to go all around town and erase the markings on the walls where assassins are supposed to ambush Bernald. So the assassin we saw right here, if we erase this, he's not gonna appear. That's not to say he won't appear at all, because he will, and this is where that commission comes into play. It says here that the secondary immediate place will be in the bazaars. So there are seven or eight markings around town, and if we erase all of them, there will be four or five assassins in the bazaar. Not all of them will end up there. Some will spawn around town, but they will be in places where they are of no threat to us or Bernald. <coughs> so my next goal then would be to erase them all, and once I return to the bell tower after that, I can ring the bells, and Bernald will be able to proceed to Grand Bottoms unimpeded. Here we have the goat foot tavern with a menu, which I'm not gonna read. <coughs> that guy over there is neutral. The footman's grave. In here are two pressure plates and also a goblet. Gold hammer, total 2447, and that checks off our old goal. Let's break in here next. Hmm. This funny. is a house of some doctor. Stacks. Back here there is nothing. And the patrolling guard inside has the doctor's key. the doctor's study. In here is not a copy of his key. A ring here. An antique scroll. 
Steady is he who stands among the columns of his house, for the supports of his roof are sure. Warm is he who lights fire in his hearth, for the flames shall his spaces illuminate. Learned is he whose eyes are turned towards the sky, for among the stars be the signs writ. Content is he who drinks of wine and sun, for the nightly trail he shall not wander. From the cycles of Ader Hormozd. He who has sailed the... And it's unfinished. And here is the doctor's journal. Dinner with the Katantin and two friends under the tree. He has once again shown good taste in the vines. Where does he procure them, and where does he acquire the spices? A mystery. I still remember the succulent fruits he brought for our last feat, and the slightly intoxicating bouquet of those purple wines. Cranial measurements of three patients. I am certain the pressures of the cerebral fluids are the key to understanding sudden changes in temperament. My own must be flowing bountifully, because my mind was making great leaps, and I made connections I never had considered. A healthy life-leisure balance makes all the difference. Dined at the Gallant Grouse. A plate of Ortlands, no longer filled with sun, but juicy and redolent of herbs and the liqueurs they were suffocated in. The tiny bones cracking between my teeth, the nut-like notes of the innards, the fragrance under, my, under the napkin draped over my head. A very good dinner, although not up to the contentance level. I should propose a competition, the best chef in the city against his genius. Dull and petty custom all day, time drags on, and the incessant nattering of my patience is profoundly gush. At least there is something to look forward to. I will propose that wager at our dinner tomorrow. The garden door was closed tonight. The contentant was not in evidence. I waited by the door in case he would open up, but no luck. I had to return to my room once that mousy woman living below my terrace was openly staring at me. Does she suspect? Ask the guards for a leg of mutton. Tough and leathery. No juices. Ashes and dust in my maw. Terrible week, terrible patience. The usual tonics and powders to the usual ailments. Why doesn't the Catentin answer my house call? Bad time at the grouse. Artless. Suggested they fire Bennett and beg the real master to perform his arts. Bennett almost ran me through with one of his skewers and I knocked his cap of his fat head. A paltry and fake imposter. Incessant succession of patience. Prescribe laxatives to Lord Hofton. That'll teach him not to bother me anymore. Damn his money. Tomorrow we feast. The door was closed. I clawed at the metal and brought a piece of wire to open the garden, but no use. The sweetbreads were like clumps of clay. The memory of those dinners is unbearable. Finally news of the Catente. He is bedridden in his house. That's all the guard would tell. I offered to help, but he told me not to disturb. I wonder if I could replicate the Catente's recipe. I just can't muster the courage for a hunt. And yet a doctor could get away with it. Brought up the question with Arlene, and he as a joking matter. He turned ashen and dour and made an uncommittal answer. Holding out on me, he can keep his meat. The hemorrhoids dragged off Kellen. Things keep getting worse. Is this related to Arlene? The woman on the lower terrace was having roasted chicken with wine. A tasty morsel. She looks a bit like those Ortlands. Pretty and delicate. Long, nimble finger bones. Does she sin? Useless. The door was not open. My knuckles were bloody when I returned home. It was as if the pasters were mocking me. The hemorrhoids are looking for Kellen's associates. Giao is no doubt on the prowl. I must visit Kellen tomorrow before they extract a confession. Slip him a packet of dust. But now, dinner. I'm famished. Okay. Here we can use the doctor's key to unlock this. And is this the door to the Catentins that he was writing about? We can get in there, but not from here. We're gonna do that later. <laughs> Let's jump to the terrace below. Here is a gold goblet and a copy of the City Tribune. An auspicious anniversary. No less than 20 years ago, would the eyes of our fine city finally see the scaffold removed and marvel at the mighty erection before their very eyes. Indeed, it is a date which should not be forgot, and this humble scribe, who had first seen the unveiling with a comely lass by his side, has been left with a permanent impression. Let us behold the grand foyer overlooking the expanse of waters, and defiant of that stuffy nest of faded glories that lies beyond the walls of Hightown. Let us turn our backs on the sad sights of yesteryear and proceed to the Grand Hall, where the Jubilee Ball will take place." Continued. On the servant question. Sir, let it be said, with a degree of candor, that while one might entertain some sentimentality towards the lower ranks, Mrs. Winthrop's suggestions, bless her little heart, are entirely unworkable. Should we let the gossip spread rumors? The drunkard tremble about his fences and the loud give his opinion on higher matters? 
This freedom to speak malarkey shall do no good, yet it will protect the scoundrel and embolden the uncouth. Next time the good Mrs. Winthrop should entertain similar fancies, she should try her medicine on her own servant staff, and see the shambles they will make of it. So it will be bluntly, gentlemen. Illumin Jubilee. Sir, your funny testament of the so-called architectural marvels of grand modern estate is an amalgamation of obsequious psychophancy and plain bad taste. The building, if it may be called that, is a shambles. The constructions, while overwrought, is blocky and cubic. The colonnade, banal, and the side towers most resembling the sweet cones peddled on the market. Indeed, one might get the idea Grand Modern had drawn inspirations from the commons. Let me remind you that there is also a good reason the wreck stands below Hightown and not within. Grand Modern is but an ironmonger, and the pedigree he has secured with all his lucre is trivial. No high society shall accept this moneyed upstart, but the toadies and opportunists who crowd to his sides. How convenient he has seen fit to finance a certain periodical where his lackeys can yap about his purchase title and slight talent. In any event, let it be known that I am hereby cancelling my subscription to your so-called journal, Sir Francesca Hawking Esquire. Are infiltrators real? Sir, the question is non-cupatory. They are certainly around and among us, and the lack of solid evidence only shows how shrewd those shady miscreants are. To deny the obvious is gullible, or if you permit, the remark convenient. Acton Hale, entomologist. Rumple Ball, White Bell Esport 11, Cinders and Green Bay 30, Newgate House Head Rematch 80. If we jump over here, we can find a bottle of wine. Total 2639. And there is no good way to get down to the streets from here, so we have to go back through the doctor's house. <sighs> He can relock this door as well. And there is sometimes an archer up there. He's not there right now, which is good. <sighs> this way we can jump over to this side and grab a gold goblet. here. Inventory of special equipment, which I'm not gonna read. And up here are two nuggets and the readable. Sewersman's message. I'm surprised as you are, but they do look the part. Can't say anything more sure without running them by a dealer tomorrow, but why not? Our second move then, investigate where they were coming from and how they ended up clogging that outflow. The source must be the second transversal, runs parallel to the channel, comes up from a little ways up. Some natural reservoirs that way, but I don't know any available access points. Raise the issue with Pratt, ask him if we could do a breach via private cellars or some forgotten old conduit. But be discreet, tell him it's about blockage, don't mention the find unless you really have to. That's key. Right. Let's continue down Dead Cat Street. By order of His Eminence, Master Forger Giao, this domicile is condemned, and all effects therein have been confiscated. A vile lurking thing, a man who would poison hale body and righteous mind, had worked his shameful deceptions within. As doth the creeping vines, it cracks in the wall 
and the foul chameleon mimic the color that most befits its purpose. The Red Sick entrance here. May the hammer fall upon the unrighteous. So there is a window up there, but no way to rope up. The easiest way of getting up there is to stand on top of this and <laughs> simply mantle this metal beam. <laughs> Inside is a gold candlestick and a message. Kind master, I beseech you, don't leave me to my fate. They are at my door. I know you shall find this and a way to rescue me from the hammers. I shall not talk, I just beg. Down here is the second marking we have to erase. This will take us to Master Forger's house and through here we get to where we started the mission. And there is another marking. So this then will take us to Swordsman Plaza. And here is another way to get to Master Forger's mansion. Give, give generously for the builder's plan. Now the priest here has the jail key and let me actually knock him out and show you something. The spectacle of sinners. So this is where we should find Pud. And we need to find a way to help him escape. Great great is my burden and just thy judgment. O oh, master builder, heed my penance. Pud, insubordinate, found stuff in old boot filled with ogre into the nation box. Placed in the penitent shoes. Soul scalded, mouth stuffed with dung. So we can give Pud the jail key. We just have to be careful because he and other prisoners here can alert. And he will give us Pod's tip in return. Thank you kindly, young stranger. I knew the woodsman's crooked path would lead one such as you to me. Fair is fair, so a key for a key. A head in a garden, under it be. A darkling man was its possessor last, his manner obscure, his passage hushed. I'll explain what this means pretty soon, but the problem here is that once we save and load, that key is gonna drop to the ground and alert Pud to hunt mode. And that's a ghost bust and ultimately why I'm not gonna actually do this. Oh. Hedda, Tanweg, gossip about neighbor's housemate, Scourging. Anton, Skimmer, sale of temper milk. Made to swig a measure of water for each measure of milk. Find. Skarl, Blasphemer, expectoration before chapel, possession of twig charms. Scourging, placed under the weights. So let's head down here next. <laughs> this is Hesperin's Gap. We can get into this forge by picking the lockbox here, but there is no need. Here is the fourth mark into erase. And here... <laughs> now that's big. Largest cucumber in the city. We can break into this shop, but there is no need. And this will take us to Grand Modern's. <laughs> But we don't have to go there just yet. So next I'm gonna follow this archer up the forger's walk and get into Master Forger's house. Needs must I come my nerves. Here is a gold candlestick, total 2913, and two readables. 
Disposal instructions. Brother Crassus, I agree that no good metal should be contaminated with items of unknown provenance. Who knows what dark designs the wretch has wrought, ere he was apprehended. I advise you to use a 1 to 5 solution of holy water to lift whatever curse may linger, and then dispose of the effects by burning. Should there be further doubts, thou might consult me in person once I'm back from my present engagement. <coughs> Master Forger's letter. Why, Master Forger Augustine? Tis by thy very missive that I know thy nature, thou uncouth heretic and defiler of holy work. Verily, thou art a cad and a bounder. Thy presence is at the front. Thou art low as a slug. Indeed, thou art a cold and cruel brute, hormone girl of a priest. Thou should go to Craxcleft for thy crimes. However, thou art a coward, and thou dost flee from the hint of danger. Tis no surprise thou dost test my patience still, for thou art an unjust wretch and a false meddler. But listen well, forger of false writs. Thou art cruel and unjust. In time thou wilt suffer for thy crimes. And indeed, thy spirit is weak and feeble, for thou dost not strive for perfection. With respect to the game of chess, the offer stands. Next council meeting it is, and prepare thyself, for I shall have no mercy. <coughs> and finally, up here... <laughs> I think I deserve a pat on the back for that one. So that completes rubbing the golden plate on Master Forger's mansion. And here we have some holy water for special emergencies. This loops us back to Swordsman Plaza. Another mark in here. And one more near Haskell's front door. One more up ahead. So the cistern court gate is locked, it's not connected to the rest of them. And we're still not roping up here. We will soon. Mm. Nothing there now. Here is the final marking, so that's eight in total, I believe. <coughs> so we're back to that cat street. We're now above it. Dr. Felicia's comb, physician. Here we can hop over the wall. There is no loot here, but there is some equipment and a message. This is the best I could scrounge together for this delivery. The regular sources have been out ever since Montrose has been out of the picture, Dorcas has moved his trade to Blackbrook, and with the stone market trades, even Willin and Associates are little to deal in unlicensed narcotics. Transporting is a nightmare under the inspections and the nighttime gateway regime. Gea has really pinched us where it hurts, and the regular guys feel hounded and cornered. I'm sorry to say we may come to an impasse, unless something were to happen to Giao. You are a physician, are you not? This may be the time for you to do us a favor, or we may be forced to cease business in Hightown altogether. And up on the windowsill there is a gold goblet, and getting it is pretty tricky. What you want to do is jump over to this sign, and stand on the edge here, and jump and grab the goblet. 
We don't actually want to mantle into that window because it's difficult to get down from it. Here is another copy of the orders. It's nearly identical to the one we read before, but this part is different. Your doubts about the separation are duly noted. I myself do not know the exact reason for the exercise, but the orders came from on high with the usual signatures, and I shall assume full responsibility. <coughs> Before I return to Firewatch, let me show you what Pod's tip was all about. So the tip said, a head in a garden, under it be. So this is the garden, and here is the head. Under it is the key. Now once again it's pretty obscure. But just like with the engraved skull we got earlier, this is not needed to complete the mission. All it does is allow us to grab one piece of loot, and we're gonna do that pretty soon. <laughs> so now we can lock this. A real save before ringing the bells, just in case. Here we go. Now, despite what the objective says, we don't actually have to follow Bernald. Now that the path is clear, he can make it to Grand Moderns just fine on his own. So while he's doing that, I'm gonna clear out cistern port. This is ultimately why I skipped it until now. I knew there would be some downtime here. If I stick close to the walls, I have a chance of not being seen. Garrett will give another remark once Bernald reaches his destination, which could be a little immersion-breaking if we don't actually see him entering Grand Moderns, but I don't want to follow him around when I could be grabbing more loot. So let's cross this roof. Who's there? Hello? Hmm. Nothing there now. Rope up here. <laughs> A gold candlestick. And the warning. Written by Bernold himself. Ammon, this is looking mighty bad. Did you know Paulson was dead this whole time? All those unanswered messages and us failing to put A and B together. Mind you, it was the same time that Captain was hounding me about Frost Sterno. I am positive he was suspecting me just because I had once called his so-called masterwork a stupendous effort culminating in utter mediocrity, and the work of an intellect better suited for making thimbles. What an uncouth persistent liquid that buffoon was. But I digress. Storno and Paulson. If we had Kerwin's fall from his window, and Rochable's disappearance on one of his morning walks, which we chalked up to liquor and some freak misstep down by the canal, that makes four, and a troublesome number that is, since it leaves only us. 
You know, I refused to carry even a knife, and always said the pen was mightier than the sword. Well, who knows what I should think now. To make things worse, that the boxmaker is pestering me about an appointment again. I bet he wants back to the circle, which would be back to three, but we can't be serious about helping that maniac to a cathedral again. We would be the laughing stock at the academy, never mind his rants and wild conjectures. I've agreed to hear him out tonight at Grand Modern Soiree, and will try to talk some sense to him, if I can get through his thick skull, that is. He might change his disposition, if he learns he too may be sought by a deranged killer. I will stay late into the night, and wait until the gun's first call to cut the meeting as short as possible, so no drinking tonight. I must lay out my proposition to Grand Modern while he's in a good mood, and after the meeting, it'll be time for a rest. Drain a cup in my name with the boys, Arnold. <laughs> Getting down from here is tricky, so I suggest saving. And the easiest way I've found is to hop over to the ledge here. <laughs> and now we can enter this apartment. Huh? Uh, around here these old buildings make too much noise. <coughs> I'm not even gonna comment. And nothing else? I guess it was nothing. <gasps> Who made that noise? <gasps> I suggest making another save here. And what I want to do next is shoot arrow, arrow, something like this, which will allow me to grab this face. And then when I take the rope from this angle, I should be able to fall down and not take any damage. That's the best way I've found of getting down here without losing the rope. place of interest in Cistern Court is an apartment there? up here. Is someone there? <laughs> oh, well. Guess it was nothing. This is where we need the mysterious key. So here is a vase and a cryptic message. It is all set. You can continue with your part of the charade and I will continue with mine. Amber eyes. So apart from this, you can slash a banner, get a speed potion and flip this, which will allow you to access a secret room back here. But there is nothing you can actually do in here. Now it seems like it would be pretty difficult to get down from here without taking any damage, but it's quite easy. Just stand here and walk forward. And you won't take any damage or make any noise. <laughs> Could you possibly be any more helpful? And that remark indicates that Bernal has made it. Which also means that we can finally head into Haskell's. So now we can rope up here. Let's get a break line of sight with any neutral guard here. <laughs> it was 
here is where we can use the engraved skull. Inside is a gold skull. And this door has also opened, and this loops us back to the doctor's place. Additionally, from here, you can get out of bounds, and this is the easiest way to access this mission's ultimate easter egg. So down there you can see a drunk guy, and by his feet is a lockbox. If you use the mysterious key on that lockbox, you'll be able to enter a room right below us. That's where the easter egg is. With the city access key, you can get back to Bolisards if you want. And let's read this. Don't be a clod, Oswin. Someone will just take the crystals, or worse, the kind Mr. Perry will think you a thief and throw us out into the street. We are lucky to rent as Garrett at the price we do, and have the Master Forger as a warden. Don't forget the kind of work Mr. Gurnall had us do when we were still living near Salt Market. It was very lucky of you to find that brooch and get us out of there. Think of the look Mr. Gurnall gave us when you paid the bond that let us move here to Hightown. Hightown, Oswin. You just keep the crystals. It fell out of the cart when they carried off that alchemist's stuff. Nobody will go looking for them. There will be a pawn shop that'll take it. Build the nose, we could use the money. The roof is leaking, the children live in tatters, and I am lucky to get Mrs. Perry's hand-me-downs. With some cash, Edlin could make a maid, and we could send Dallin to be a hammerite, so he would support us in our old age. Think of it as a stroke of good luck. For now, just stash him somewhere near where nobody will be looking. <coughs> Nothing else in here. <coughs> Who's that there? Identify yourself! A guard inside the building heard me. Now we could rope up to the tower here. <gasps> Crudget, seven minutes, kept kicking and swinging. Blenwin, two minutes, neck snapped immediately. Crowd displeased, took it out on the men in stocks. Even threw a bottle my way, and the miscreant escaped in the commotion. Julieta, nine minutes, such a pretty flower, and so afraid, alas. Slim, twelve minutes, old Toby, seventeen minutes. Slow in four minutes, but he was already dead, so executioner slipped him something. Jaka the fidget, ten minutes, worthy of his name, danced the merry jig. Hull the ox, twenty-two minutes, one of the strongest yet, and they really didn't rush this one, well deserved. Jaffrek, six minutes, bad luck, for his writ of clemency arrived at twelve minutes from the smith in exile. There are also two gold candlesticks here, total thirty-four fifty-nine. May those who would keep sacred knowledge, knowledge of body and mind from men, be wrought by the majestic principle. That was a little further than I wanted to go. Okay, from here, you can simply jump and mantle this. And now we can head into Humphreys. Here is another copy of the City Tribune, which I read already, and a vase. And we should be able to hide here.
thought I saw something. Another vase and a gold plate up here, total 3609. And before heading into Haskell's, let's make another real save. Getting into Haskell's is the most difficult move in the mission, I would say. Unless you douse the storage. If you don't do that, it's still possible to pick the slug bugs while dodging the two guards inside, who can spot you through the gate here, as well as two guards out here the archer being the biggest problem, but if there is one torch I would suggest dousing, it's that one. So let's close this. Let me show you what's downstairs first. Who's there? Is someone there? We got four chairs here. In memory of the four, Sir Varys II, Protector of Melvin, Sir Consett, Exalted Messenger, Sir Oisin, Shieldbearer, Sir Mutton, Knight Banneray. Where I really want to go is upstairs. There is Lord Haskell. He has the vault key, which I'm gonna need. I'm also gonna need this holy water vial. Two readables here. Testament. My beloved wife, by the time you read this missive, I shall assuredly be dead. This is no doubt of little concern to you, as you had been just as indifferent to the death of my son, whom I treasured, but you, foul wiper that you are, had never loved. Even as he lies in repose, dead by his slayer's blade, you have gone off to another feat, another gathering of indolent men. Nay, woman of loose virtues, accursed adulterer, I know you very well. I know what you have done on those lavish banquets of yours, how you had mocked my name and my ancestry, those brave men who had served this city in its gravest hours of need. I know what guests we have brought to our bedchamber when I was away on business, and Lord Humphrey, your own cousin among them. But that is in the past, my beloved wife, and all that had been mine is now yours alone. No heirs left to step forward for the inheritance. Not even those faded specters of the past you had left at can stop you, and I am gone. The poison that I have drunk was well mixed, and bountiful enough for your cup as well. I even refilled it during our supper, remember? How eagerly you had drunk, and how beautiful you were. The question arises, no doubt, as you read these lines, is there an antidote, and do I still have time to obtain it? What a quandary. I know not myself. I know not of such things. But hark, from beyond the veils of darkness you can hear me laugh. Yours until the end, Lord Roderick Haskell the Sixth. <laughs> Let's read this book as well. In the final days, when the dead lay in the streets and the great lords and ladies were entrapped in their own palaces, had Hightown turned from a great bulwark into an insidious trap. The great hunger came for all, widows and orphans first, but the burghers and guildsmen not far behind. From among the burned and tumbled stones, they had extracted the weeds and lichens, and slaughtered their animals. Many had done terrible deeds for a loaf of bread, and no silver would buy relief, as the granaries were found looted. So cornered, some had begged for clemency to no one, and some rode with final strength to mend the walls. In truth, that which the leagues had won, had they also lost at once, as they were exhausted from the fighting and short on reserves. They had barricaded the streets and sent fiery missiles over the parapets, but no strength for an attack nor a breach had they. But the terrible year of 596 would not be over before another horror would be visited upon the city. And from here... 
we can hop over to this window and get a race. That's the room with the four chairs. And down here is the bolt. Lord Melvin Haskell, the four protect him and his, they who had raised arms and laid down their lives, shall serve evermore. And this we have to pick. There is the gemstone. Before we can take it, we need to use a holy water arrow on it. This will make any fence crack a smile. Here we go, the knight's soul. And this completes Lord Haskell's curse gemstone objective. Now, when we leave here, there's gonna be a loud noise, which can alert that guard, so let's wait just a little. And make sure he didn't alert. Okay, good. And we can use the vault key on this door, which leads out to a familiar ledge. Now, what also just happened is four haunts have spawned around the city. One of them is in this underpass right near Swordsman Plaza. This is right on Bernal's way when he goes to Grand Modern's, so you can see how grabbing the cursed gemstone would be a problem if we did that before doing the Bernal objective. So we wouldn't be in an unwinnable situation because you can still kill the hunt, but it would be a situation not good for ghosting in the slightest. The safest way down from here is pretty far, but what we can also do is just jump and mantle <laughs> this bit. It's pretty easy. Over there is the hunt. Luckily we don't need to go that way. All we have to do now what is make there? our way to Grand Moderns. Seems peaceful enough now. I never actually read this. Passage per head, one coin, after nightfall, five coin, per basket, bail or crate, two coins. For exemptions, present pass. Okay, that archer is on his way. I'm gonna have to wait here. Is someone there? Help! Oh. Wasn't expecting to run into anyone down there. But yes, there are some guests leaving Grand Moderns at random intervals. Or maybe they are not random. <laughs> they just occur <laughs> over time. In the shadow. 
Now, the assassin, who was meant to wait for Bernald here, has spawned right there. He has a pickpocket, and it can be quite difficult to get. So when the light Someone is behind off, us. we can move in. Someone behind us. It needs to stay off for a little longer than. Thought I heard some look. Someone behind us. There. And this guy. Nothing now. Has a canister. And you see, it says sugar. So I think that's Kitty Cat. We can't Stop. actually do anything. Is someone following us? With this canister. But it counts as Just a pickpocket. the wind, I guess. Someone behind us. Getting out is tricky as well. So here we are in a shadow and we can. Nothing now. Get as far as here. And the light is off. We can rush out. Thought I heard someone back there. Just the wind, I guess. Good. Next, we have the rope up here. But we have to be wary of the two archers. One in the building right here, who you can barely see. And another one on Grand Modern's balcony. They are extremely sensitive. <laughs> Next, we can climb this, and from here we should be able to hop over to this balcony. That window is what our contact has opened for us. Before Bernald gets to Grand Modern's, it's of course closed.
Right. This guy is our contact. He won't alert to us. Who's there? And if I don't go in there to show you that guy, I can make it up here in time. This room are two vases. <coughs> and let's wait for that dude to come back. show you what's down here. In this room there is nothing but you can hide there and this leads out to this bridge which I'll show you in a couple minutes. First I want to get down here. There's a gold goblet. These halls must speak from the past. <coughs> Look over there. You see something? Over there is a vase. a necklace. Total 41.94. From down here we can rope up to a balcony. And here is that bridge. <sighs> this door is locked and unpickable. Someone there? Let me just show you what's down here. Nothing down that corridor. And here's a journal. Evening Watch. Rogue up fight between the younger Brascombe and Master Calgrave. Calgrave's niece seems to have been worth it. Quite the flirt. Servant girl found fancy hat and walking stick. Sent a gate to check in with the party in revelers. Set Morik to watch that shifty looking fellow eyeing the statuary so intently. Something off about the guy. Escorted Lady Haskell to side room to rest a little and sent Cadrin to clean up the mess. Assign two guys to get her home safely once she's better. Make sure they pay their respects to Lord Haskell. He is still grieving his son. Lady Kelvin slapped Cadrin for some insolence or whatnot. Offered to have the girl flogged, gifted her a bottle from the special reserve. Inspection of southern room complex. Probably just some kind of noise. And 
here is where we have to go. What's now, that? when we open this vent, this woman is gonna wake up. Something I noticed in my practice run, but it's not something I remember from playing the mission a couple years ago. That's strange. Now, our contact will alert to the noise here. So we have to wait for him to go away. That winter there was no snow in the city, and neither was there bread, and men consumed the rotted leaves before the rent. Yet in court the overlord Pazar left at full shape and jest. Many a man and merry dame praised cook and guests. Come spring the hollow days were at an end, and so was the great feat, and in secrecy they carried overlord Pazar to his final entombment. What have we here? So that's it, this objective is now completed, and this one is cancelled. All we have to do now is get out of Grand Modern's and finish the mission. <gasps> Up here is the tiara, which is also our last piece of loot, total I don't want to take any chances with this guy, so I'm gonna wait for him to go all the way back here. <laughs> and from here we should be able drop into the water, no one should alert to that. <sighs> and here is where we end the mission. Well, this is my way out. Better not mess with it. Alright, mission complete. In 1 hour, 20 minutes, 11 seconds. Found all the loot. 4319. Picked 6 of 8 pockets, which is a bug, there are only 6. And picked 15 locks. A couple words about the ending here. I know a few players have said they didn't think it was a satisfying conclusion to the mission. 
because the entire mission builds up to whatever was gonna happen at Grand Modens, and in the end, Bernold just gets killed and nothing is resolved, really. This is a cliffhanger, and Milan himself has said that he wants to continue this story, which I hope he does. But to me, this mission feels complete, and I actually like this ending, because it shows that not every job that Garrett takes will be a success, and you don't see that too often, do you? So we spent this entire evening trying to get closer to the Golden Books, and in the end our plans were foiled by some unknown powers, so all that's left to do for Garrett is to retreat and wait for another chance to get a crack at the Golden Books. So it's an interesting take on how a job can go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Next time I'm gonna play Milan's unbeaten guest, so hope to see you guys then. For now, take care.